Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna put my phone on do not disturb. Hello, everyone. I came in a little early. My seven o'clock, I typically come on at seven on Sundays. For you all that are out and about, it is a beautiful day. I think in my town, they're not opening the city back up until tomorrow. So I don't know how I feel about that, but for the most part, I'm just trying to figure out how they just going to open everything back up and nothing is solved. We still are in the middle of this pandemic. People are still dying. People are still being sick and people are still being infected. And so there has been no remedy that I've seen and they're just going to go back to normal. Well, I've seen a bunch of people posting, don't come to my house because <laughs> they saying they, they still on lockdown. Hey, man. So I'm coming in this afternoon, this Sunday evening. Hello, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. I'm coming in, choose this day. This is what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm trying to be uh, calmed down, but I'm so excited because it's such an awesome message. You know, that many times we as believers, we forget choosing God is a choice. This is a choice. You got to make a choice. It's not a, I'm going to see what I want to do and make my mind up at some point in time. You know, guess what? We're in the middle of some catastrophic times. We don't have time to be playing with our lives, especially our spiritual life. And so then I usually come on on Sundays at 7 o'clock. Come in and share the word of God with you all. I'm hoping you all can take this ride with me. So I came on a little early so that I could catch some of my friends to see if they were going to come in and join me. But, you know, the show must go on. I definitely have been... Uh, having gone through my own struggles, trust me, I don't care if you are a person of God, you're going to have struggles like everyone else. You're going to have to make choices to do right, do wrong. You're going to be presented with all type of temptation and things that look good, things that look like a good idea, but it's not a God idea. And so sometimes we have to make a choice. There may be some difficult choices. It might make you sad. It might make you lonely. It might look like you're losing. It might look like you got to take a loss to win. It may look a lot of different ways, but we all know that God is able to work, make all things work for the good of them that love him and called according to his purpose. Amen. Even the things that we think are bad, God is able to turn that around for our good as well. So I'm just trying to give you all a few more minutes to, to uh, tune in. If you catch it on the replay, please share it with your network, share it with your friends. Amen. I'm going to be talking today about choose this day. That's what I'm going to be talking about. How are you all doing? I hope you all are enjoying this wonderful weather. I hope when you go out in the house that you are wearing a face mask. Amen. That's what we need to do for our own health. We want to take care of your health and safety. But we are still in the middle of a pandemic. And so I am still trying to figure out how are they opening back up the country. And they haven't figured out how they're going to solve the initial problem. But here we find ourselves on the eve of my city opening back up tomorrow. And I'm still trying to figure out how did that happen, amen? So we're going to be coming out of the book of Joshua, chapter 24. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I don't know how long I will be on. I'm not going to try to make it a super long message. I actually have a meeting after this, this particular live, but I don't want to rush God. I don't want to rush the move of God. I want to allow God to use me how he wants to use me. So I'm going to be reading out of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 13 through 15. And if you have your Bibles, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started to reading. It says in verse 13, I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you did not build and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves, which you did not plant. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you, serve the Lord. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So I want to come in and talk about choose this day. And I want to say that God has been good to a lot of us. He has been good to you. He has been good to me. He has been good to a lot of people. 
and from from this time for all the way back to our birth now we have all gone through some difficult choices but difficult times but i'm talking about this particular scripture he's asking us to make a choice many of us have survived much that has killed many of our counterparts amen god has brought us out of many things that have killed friends and close ones loved ones other people people we was in the car with the bullet didn't miss us the wreck he knocked us, knocked the car up, and it knocked up everybody else, but it didn't happen to us, amen? He has seen us through this virus so far, while others have died and have succumbed to the illness. Some are in hospitals. Some have loved ones they have lost that they have not had a chance to spend their last dying moments with, amen? But God has been good to you. He has been good to us. He has brought us through all of that. Despite of calamities and catastrophes and wars and plagues, which he talks about in the 24th chapter of Joshua. He's going back recounting to the tribe of Israel all of the things that God has done with them, to them, for them, up to this point. He has led the children of Israel through the Red Sea. He's delivered them from plagues that were in Egypt. The death angel passed over them. Balak sent Balaam to curse the children of Israel, and many of the people tried to curse you, but... They could not because the children of Israel were blessed just as you were blessed. God has called you blessed. People have tried to do curses over you, but it has not worked because you were blessed. Listen, many of you witches and warlocks have tried to do spells over you, voodoos. They've had to cast spells. You've been victim of generational curses. Some of you have tapped into the occult. You've been in devil worship. You've practiced and entertained all kinds of demonic practices, rituals. You visited mediums. You dabbled in all kinds of profane things that could have or tried to take you out. But God delivered you out of all of them. He brought the children of Israel out of the battle of Jericho. Gods, any gods that you are worshiping, that's any ritual, practice, person, item, belief, gambling, lotto, lottery, seances, burning incense, anything you put hope and belief in. In outweighing your trust in the true and the living God, amen, you're going to have to make a choice. God is saying today, choose this day. Choose this day. Whom are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the gods of your fathers? Or are you going to serve the risen Savior? Amen. We have to make a choice. I'm just coming in sharing today. You got to choose this day. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. God told me at some point, I know it's painful. There are many people I've had to leave behind relationships, loved ones. I mean, trust me, I like men too. Trust me. I had to break up with people because God told me I cannot be associated with any profane thing. That means anything that does not respect the sacred and the holy call on my life. I cannot be associated with that. Amen. Even though my natural flesh sometimes may get lonely or I might want to have friends or I might want to do some things that look fun that other people are doing, but because of the responsibility that I have and what God has called me to, I have have to say no i have to make choices there are many times we want to side with the enemy because it looks fun for a moment but god is calling many of us out of that lifestyle to make a decision and to go back is going to be detrimental to you some of you have come out but you're still looking at back at old Egypt, just like Lot. When they told Sodom and Gomorrah was going to go up in flames, they told Lot's wife not to look back. But when she looked back, what happened? She turned into a pillar of salt. Many of us have been given a directive, and God has told us to get away from certain people, to put away certain things, to come out of certain beliefs, certain lifestyles, certain practices, certain rituals. Certain things we have done or been doing or knew about or we have been dabbling in and God has told us to put away the profane things from us. There comes a point in time when God is not going to continue to turn his eye away from our foolishness. I have been one that have been doing the same thing. I don't care what position you in, what office you hold. It is levels to this thing. It's called sanctification is a process. That means it takes time to come out of the world. It takes time to get out of lust. It takes takes time to get out of believing and trusting and holding into these things in the world because we are flesh creatures. We are in this flesh suit. We are used to the familiar, used to what we used to do, how we used to do it, who we used to be around, things that we used to do. And many times when we have to come out of that lifestyle, it is painful to us because we have to learn a new normal. Many times we have to put trust in something that's unknown that we have never seen before. God many times has taken us places and around corners, around 
around people in the situations that are unfamiliar and we got to put all our trust in him. Amen. But I'm letting you know in this scripture in the 24th chapter of Joshua verses 13 through 15. If you go back and you read the whole chapter of, of uh, verse 20, I mean, it's chapter 24, it is telling you all of these places that God has delivered the children of Israel from. He has brought them out of all kinds of calamities, all kinds of catastrophes, all types of wars, all types of plagues, that it got people around them, but it did not get them. Amen. How many of y'all can attest that God has brought you out of many things, that it killed your friends when they stayed in it? Listen, the car wreck might have hurt everybody, but it didn't hurt you. How, how many of you know that at the party, all the bullets was flying, it, sh it struck and killed some people, but you came out all right. Amen. I'm talking about this virus too. Many of us are walking around, around the coronavirus all day long, in and out, working next to it. All types of things and many of us are still alive. We are still alive to tell the story. We have not died. The virus has not taken us out. But God is asking us on today, what is going to be your choice? Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the Lord? Are you going to serve the gods of your father? Uh, Joshua 24 is recounting all of these different places that God has brought the children of Israel out of. He led them out of the Red Sea. He walked them through the Red Sea. He delivered them from the plagues. The death angel passed over them. Balaam tried to curse them. That witches and warlocks, many of you all have been in the, in the occult. They, they, voodoo, casting spells, rituals, practices, gambling, lotteries, mediums. You done visited demonic things, all kinds of practices, all types of things that God done brought you out of. And you still are sitting on the fence as to what you are going to do. God is asking you today, you're going to have to choose. You're going to have to choose who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve your gods of your father? Or are you going to go back and continue to do the same thing you've been doing? God done brought you out and brought you out. He done washed over you. He done covered you. He done covered your family. Many of us are struggling in many areas of lack because we will not let go of the, of the familiar and branch out into the unfamiliar by putting our whole weight on the word all of our trust in the lord our, in our way our, our, our belief in everything he has told us many of us are used to holding on to things that we are used to holding on to the familiar but you cannot grow into the things of god holding on to old things old people old beliefs old habits old rituals old Oh, just all old practices that God has said, come out of that. Leave that alone. Turn from that. You're going to have to make a choice. The word says today, Joshua 24, verses 13 through 15. I had read again that God was telling them how blessed they was. All of the great things that they were enjoying. And they still look like they was trying to decide if they was going to stick with God or not. But God called all of these people that done came through the Red Sea. He didn't call all these tribes of Israel together to recount to them all of the things that God has done for them. As I had shared earlier, you're going to have to choose. I said many of you have survived many things that have killed your friends, killed your families, killed your counterparts. Kill your brothers and sisters and siblings. He has seen you through the virus thus far. While it has killed others and many have died, many have been stricken. Many of you are still alive to tell the story. Despite calamity, despite catastrophes, despite wars and plagues he brought the children of Israel through, they still was trying to make up their mind if they was going to serve God. And Joshua got mad. He called them together. He said, let me give y'all a lesson. I'm going to give y'all a history lesson and go back over all of the things that God had brought us out of, brought us through, uh, allowed it to pass over us. It didn't touch us. We made it out of this unscathed, the battle of Jericho. Listen, many of us have, have been around witches and warlocks. We've cast spells. We've been involved in voodoo. We've visited mediums. We've been doing all kinds of demonic practices, worshiping the occult, devil worship, practice or entertain all types of things that are profane and, 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 and not sacred in the eyes of the Lord. And he done brought us all out. And we still trying to decide if we going to come all the way out and serve him fully. Or if we going to continue to dabble in things we know that is not, that's unfruitful and unproductive. But I'm telling you, I was in a relationship for a while and God told me, it's time for you to disconnect from anything profane. Amen. Profane. I said, what is that? I looked it up. He said, anything that has irreverence or disrespect for the, the, the call 
of the sacredness of God and the call and the power and the authority that I have on your life. There are some things I cannot be associated with. Some people you cannot be associated with. Some people I cannot be associated with. There comes a time you have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. Are you going to serve God or are you going to continue to do it your way? Because trust me, eventually consequences are going to come from us making the wrong choices going around and around the same mountain when God had already told you to leave that alone. There are many things that we need to be sanctified from. That's why the word says, come from amongst them and be separated, saith the Lord, and then I will receive you. Many things we are suffering for lack and different things that we want to come to pass in our life, but we cannot see them holding on to the familiar. We must let go of what we know, let go of where we've been, let go of who we've been doing it with. Amen. It's time to branch out into new things, new faith, new levels of victory, faith to faith, glory to glory. Some things you will never see until you let go of the old. If you want to see something new, you got to choose who are you going to serve? Who are you going to follow? Who is going to be your God? Are you going to continue? Your God is in your belly. Who you want to serve? You want to serve your old practices, old rituals, the devil. You want to serve the lotto, seances, burning incense, gambling, all types of things, all types of rituals and practices that are unfruitful, unproductive. And that the belief in that is outweighing your trust in the true and living God. You're going to have to make a decision today. Who are you going to serve? That's what God is letting us know. This virus coming through the land is causing people to make a decision. A lot of people have been living a certain way for a long time. And God is like, look, it's time for you to make a decision. You see the plague going through the land. It might have passed you last time, but it don't mean it's going to keep on passing you. And you don't want to die in your sins. Amen. Listen, when you are connected connected to God. When you die, you got a better place to go. So listen, I'm a win-win situation. If I stay here, great. If I don't, I go with Christ. That's even more wonderful. Amen. But you got to know where your soul lies. You got to make a decision. Who are you going to serve? And when you serve the Lord God, truly, you're going to have to let a lot of things and a lot of people go. Trust me, it might seem lonely at first. It may seem like it's an unfamiliar place. It may seem like, man, I'm taking a step back before I can go forward. Amen. But trust me, there is nothing short about God. There is not, God is not short and slack concerning his promises toward his people. If you put all your trust in the Lord, he said you cannot be God given. The more you give to him, the more he will give to you. So today is your day to make a decision. You're going to have to choose. Are you going to follow God or are you going to stay connected to things that are unproductive, profane, unfruitful, things he done told you to get rid of, people he done told you to disconnect from, different practices, different rituals, different people, different beliefs, different mindsets, different words you saying out of your mouth that are steadily killing the seed of faith in your mind. Ron Goo, thank you for tuning in. You're going to have to know and choose who you're going to serve. There is no two masters. You're either going to serve one and hate the other. You cannot serve God and money. You can't serve God in the world. You can't do both of them. You're either going to choose one and you're going to hate the other. That's what God has let me know. God has been good to many of us. He has provided our needs. He has done all type of miraculous things for us. Has helped us, kept us, been involved. We have, some of us have been beat down and he done brought us all the way back and stood us back up on our feet and we still wavering. We still can't make our minds up. We still thinking we going to miss something if we come out of the world. But trust me, I know God got way much more for you if you come on over to his side. Trust me, the apostle, she got to make decisions too. There are many people I have to cut loose. I have to get behind. I have to put them behind. I have to get rid of things that I may have held on to or wanted to or want to put belief in and trust in. But God told me to let it go. Let them go. They cannot be a part of your future in the condition that they're in. God is able to change anyone and fix anything. But many times we cannot get God's best because we holding on to what's good. Amen. That doesn't mean it's of God. Amen. Some things may look good, but it is not going to bring you into the miraculous abundance that God wants to bring you into. So many of us are lacking things we want to see come to pass in our life. Our prayers are being held up. Many things we want to have uh, take place in our family as far as uh, uh, salvation for people and, and different things we want to see happen in our lives. But it's because we're holding on to profane things, things that are not that do not respect the, the anointing and the holiness of God. 
things that are against what he wants you to do, people that are not a part of what you can do in the future, they're going to hold you back arguing about the past instead of looking forward in the future. God knows what your future looks like. He is not worried about your past. You need to let go of things that are familiar to grab a hold to something that's new. Trust is in the front of you. Faith is in the front of you. Faith is nothing concerned with behind. God is not worried about back there. He's worried about what's going on in front of you. Many of us, if we would notice, every time when it's time to disconnect from familiar things or things we've been around, what happens? They're always trying to be Remind you of something in the past, trying to hold you back to what you used to be, who you used to know, how you used to do stuff, trying to keep you in a little fence. God wants to give you a large territory, a big room to grow into, amen, to go into some familiar places, unfamiliar places you've never heard, you've never seen, so that you can trust him on how to operate in these new gifts and talents and opportunities that he wants to bring to you. <clears throat> But many times he cannot get the new to you because you're holding on to the old. So you got to choose this day. That's what Joshua talking about in, in Joshua 24, 13 through 15. In the first parts of the scripture, it's telling you all these great things he done brought children of Israel to. He's recounting time after time, wars, calamities, plagues, uh, 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 plagues, wars, all types of things he done brought them through. And they still is, he said, listen, you're going to have to make your mind up. You're either going to serve the old gods or you're going to serve the new God. So I'm coming on today to let you all know the word is making it plain. You're going to have to choose. You're going to have to choose. That's what this virus is doing. It's making people choose. You're either going to serve God or you're going to keep the old life you've been having. Amen. Many of us have survived much that has taken out people that we knew. Many people have been removed off this planet because they did not make a decision. The time came and they let them, the window pass. So this is your opportunity yet again. God is coming to say, what you going to do? You going to serve me or you going to continue to serve your own thoughts, your own ways, your own mind, your own agenda, your own what you want to do? Or you going to put all your weight on my word? You going to put all your trust in me? What is it going to be? We're going to have to make a decision. God wants to know. You got to choose this day. He didn't say tomorrow. He said this day. That's today. Some of you today is the last day. It's time to make a decision before the sun go down. Are you going to give your life to Christ? Are you going to cut loose what he done told you to? Are you going to make a step to step out of the familiar into the unfamiliar? You going to get out of your own flesh and step off into a faith? Are you going to listen to the Holy Spirit? Are you going to continue to do things that you know that you've already conquered, that he's already had you do that, it's time to step into some new things. Amen. So I be trying to slow down, but I'm telling you, God is letting me know you got to choose today. And I said, but as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. I am not looking back. Amen. When God tell me to make a move, I'm going to make a move. And God has had me cut it loose. And sometimes it do get lonely on the road. Sometimes you do have to go sometimes when you don't really know in, in the unknown places you got to follow. You got to walk through. You got to hold your head down sometimes. People might laugh at you, talk about you. But if God had told you to do it and he told you to cut some people loose and come away from some things, trust me, you might want a blessing for your bloodline. You might want a blessing for your family family line. You might want a blessing for your grandchildren. You might want a blessing for your great, great grandchildren. Some ain't even been born yet, but it may depend on the choice you got to make today. You got to choose this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to continue to serve the little G's and these guys you are ready to serve in practices, rituals, people, items, beliefs, gambling, lotto, lottery, seances, burning incense, anything you put your hope and belief in that's outweighing your trust in the living God. God wants to know today, who are you going to choose? Are you going to serve him? Or are you going to continue to look back and serve the things he done told you to leave, the t things and the people he done told you to let go? Are you going to be too afraid to let go of the old that you cannot reach out for the new and the unfamiliar that's going to cause you to have breakthrough in many of the areas that you are seeking God for? Many people are holding up their own breakthrough because they're holding up they're holding up their breakthrough because they're holding on to the past, holding on to own th old things, holding on to familiar things. Sometimes you got to let go of the old in order to reach over to the unfamiliar, the unknown, and the, the territory that God wants to give you, you cannot get it holding on, looking back. 
You got to put your head in the front of you and you got to put your full weight on the word, put your trust in God and keep on walking because you got to make a choice. And today is the day. Tomorrow might be too late. Many of you think you got time, but trust me, time is not on your side. God is calling people to make decisions today, right now. What are you going to do? He has asked you and told you. He's given you every opportunity to make up your mind. Many of you done dodged bullets. You done been alive like cat with nine lives. Many times you should have been dead. All the drugs you done smoked, all the drugs you done shot in your arms, all the liquor you done drank, all the parties and dangerous worlds you done been around, all the partners you done slept with, all the things you done done. Come to church and try to pretend like you living holy and know you was not. But God have given you chance after chance. His grace and mercy has been taken for, for granted. And God is asking today, I'm going to need you to make a choice before the sun go down. What are you going to do? You got to choose who you're going to serve. You're either going to serve God or you're going to continue to serve the old life that you had before and watch where that leads you. Many of you, like I said, what you are praying for, what you are believing for, what you are sowing for is held up because you are holding on to the unfamiliar and you're going to have to depart from that and order to make a decision to go out into the unknown, to meet some new people, do some new things, do it a new way, the way God wants to show you because the old way isn't working anymore. Amen. So I just want to pose a question to you. Choose this day. This Joshua 24, 13 through 15. It says, again, I have given you land for which you did not labor and cities which you did not build and you dwell in them and you eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. Hey, Bishop, how you doing? Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity, sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. <clears throat> Amen. Serve the Lord. I'm in Joshua 24 and 15. I started at 13. I'm at 15. And if it seems evil to you, serve the Lord. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I was sharing with him, Bishop. God has been good to a lot of us. He done been good to you. He done been good to me. He done been good to a lot of us. And many of us have survived much that has killed many of our counterparts. He has brought us out. Drugs, cars, uh, accidents, sicknesses, AIDS. Uh, drive-bys, all types of things God and deliver people out of. And they still hanging around trying to decide what they're going to do. God let me know I cannot be connected to anything profane. So that means anything that's, that doesn't respect the sacred call of God on my life, they cannot be a part of my life. I don't care how long they've been there. I don't care what type of relationship it is. It has to be cut off. It was sad to me, but I had to make a decision. I cannot continue to hold up the blessings of God on my life waiting for something that's not going to happen. I have to do what God tell me to do when he tell me to do it. People think they have a luxury of time of picking when they want to do it. God said, choose this day. Sometimes today is the day. It's no tomorrow. The next hour is not promised to any of us. Many of us have been sliding through this coronavirus unscathed. We don't know if we got it or been contaminated or been touched by it or not, but we are still alive in the land of the living and God is giving people opportunity to make a decision to choose this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the old gods? I was sharing that he led the children of Israel out of through the Red Sea. He delivered them from many plagues in Egypt. The death angel passed over them. Balak sent Balaam to curse the children of Israel. And many of you have tried, have tried and being cursed, but it did not because God has said you are blessed just as the children of Israel couldn't be cursed because God has blessed them. Witches and warlocks have tried to curse you. Voodoo have been said over you. People have tried to cast spells on you. Some of you have been victims of generational curses. Some of you have tapped into the occult. You have been, been in devil worship. You've practiced and entertained all type of demonic spirits practices, rituals, you visited mediums, you've dabbled in all kinds of profane things that could have or tried to take you out, but God delivered you out of them. He brought them, the children of Israel, out of the battle of Jericho. Lord said, you're going to put away your old, your gods, gods or any practice, ritual, person, item, belief, gambling, lotto, lottery, seance, burning incense, Anything you put hope and belief in that outweighs the trust you have in the living God 
is a little G and God is saying you're going to have to choose and put that stuff away from you. So today is the day for many of you. Tomorrow is going to be too late. Many of you, your next level is trapped in your ability to say yes to today and no to yesterday. You're either going to let go, let that be. And trust God for what's in front of you from the unknown and let go of the familiar and what you know and what you have been doing, who you've been connected to. It may look like you're going to be lonely and you're not going to have anyone. But you know what? You better take a hold of this hand of what God is telling you because tomorrow might not, not, might not come. I'm telling you, some of you can die in your sleep. Nothing is promised to any of us. God is saying, choose today. It's urgent. There is no more wasting time. There is no more fence sitting. There is no more thinking about it and contemplating. God is calling many of you today to make a choice. Tomorrow is too late. It's not no grace sufficient for tomorrow. Some of you are today is the day. You're going to have to make a choice before the sun go down. Some of you do not have the luxury of waiting until the end of the month or next month or next week or even tomorrow. Some of you have your life, you're taking your life in your own hands. When you take opportunities where God is giving you chance at a chance at a chance to make a choice to serve him, follow him, do it his way, and you keep on passing it back because you think you got time, because you think you're going to figure a better, quick, quicker, easier, faster way, but it's not going to happen. The way of the Lord is hard. Yes, it is. Many times it is lonely. Yes, it is. Many times it seems like there's no fun like the world that you can't uh, compete with that. But you know what? I would rather do things God's way and have the joy of the Lord than to have these fleeting things for a moment that's going to give you immediate gratification, but it's going to send my soul to hell. I do not want to end up in a burning hell. No, I want to put those things away from me and do what it's going to take that I can follow God and, and when my conscience is clear, when I don't have to come before people and be shamed. Many of you in leadership got things you need to put away from you that you do in your secret closet, in your secret time. God knows about that, but he's calling for sanctification in this season. He's calling for people to make a decision in this season. It's time to come out of those lifestyles, come out of those practices, come out of those different things and make a decision to follow God with all of your heart, soul, body, and mind. He is not taking no shorts in this season. I'm telling you, this virus that came and swept through the land. Many of you all have escaped it so far, but keep on playing with God and see the next time it roll around, that might be your, your tag, toe tag. I'm telling you, today is the day. God is calling people out of this mess and out of this world and out of these things that's been going on. You've seen it before. You've done it a hundred times. Today, today, today is the day for you to make a decision to choose this day whom you're going to serve.